Oh, that's that is a story. Maybe I can tell that now. Wow, it's an advertising thing. Yeah, but, five, yeah. Right but uh, see, um, well, what year was I that? was dipping them by hand. Oh. Then they come in with the machine to dip them, and oh, then you grab them. Oh, you're hand dipping the ice cream yeah. into the chocolate. Yeah, like my just mm. like that. Grandma could do it real quick. Yeah. Oh. Look, pick up the ice cream bar. And it went around this way, and you had to keep up with the machine then, and uh, wrap them. It would dip the Eskimo pie, see? So hmm. then we didn't dip anymore after that. But anyway, uh, Grandpa wrote to me, and of course, Grum didn't like sailors, and in those days, you know, yeah, Grum. Rowdy. Yeah. But well, where that, were you stationed then? Yeah, you were uh, on, at, on the Idaho? On the Idaho. So the fleet was there. Yeah. In Sa at San Pedro. Yeah, San Pedro Harbor. Yeah, we were training for a race, and uh, I was pulling in a cutter, the racing cutter. We were out for a spin, you know, a, a practice run, to see according to our time. In other words, we try to cut our time down and pulling the length of the breakwater, like three and a quarter miles, see? So... Yeah. Uh, some of the fellas uh, were not uh, quite ready, you know, for a hard pull. So when we come in, we come in from the race, uh, we were kind of tired, and some of us were kind of disgusted because the time wasn't there. You see, we were trying to uh, pull that course in uh, less than 19 minutes and 30 seconds, and we didn't. See, it took us... Uh, over 20 minutes to pull that course. So uh, the, the the mess cook setting up the table, he says, uh, Pete, ain't you going to eat? I said, oh, I don't feel much like eating. He said, well, we got ice cream, you know. <laughs> so I says, uh, what, where did it come from? He says, well, he says, they got it over on the beach. He says, they picked it up, he says, from the Crescent Creamery. And uh, I said, well, I'll have a couple of bars anyhow. He said, a couple of bars? He said, why not have a, a, a carton of it? Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> so I said, okay, give it to me. If I said, we got extra, a big carton. <laughs> so uh, when I, I ate, a, uh, I started eating the ice cream, and when I looked in there, I seen this note, you know. I said, what's this? So, uh, Does this have the name and the phone yeah, number, address? Yeah, address. Yeah. Address. Name address. Address. And this ice yeah. cream box, you see, and... Uh, Couple of guys all started gathering around. I said, "Let's take a look at that, because uh, maybe the girl's lonesome or something." See? <laughs> so I, I said, "Well, I think I'll drop her a line." So I, I, I dropped her, wrote a letter, didn't I? I wrote a letter. Yeah, and he asked me to meet you, and uh, I wrote back and says that my mother didn't let me meet fellas mm -hmm. on the, the, no, that he come in the uh, PE station, station, Pacific that's where Electric all the Station, came in. at where? At the Downtown. PE station. Uh, the sixth sixth Main. Main. Well, where were you living then? Uh, uh, um, uh, Eden, 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 Edendale. 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 Where's that? Well, that's... Uh, Silver Lake. Silver Lake? Yeah, where right. you went to that uh, a party was given when you were in Kenny the service. Hyatt. Yeah, yeah, that they had the story stuff. Joy, yeah, yeah, Jason. Yeah, they gave a party yeah. there. But uh, anyway, uh, then uh, Dad wrote again. And wouldn't you know the first time you came, I was coming home with a bouquet of roses from another fellow that was a florist gave me to for grub. <laughs> and that advice thought he was poor because he didn't have garters to hold his socks up. <laughs> yeah. Did you come dressed in your sailor suit? Yeah. Well, you didn't wear garters in your uh, sailor suit, did you? Yeah, uh, well, he had socks on, but he didn't uh, have no garters. I guess, and I didn't think anything of it, but Aunt Advice said that. We never did. Oh, yeah, <laughs> never get rid of anything. We never rolled. We never had garters on no. in service. But I was going with uh, George, you know. He'd come up to, yeah, no, another George, oh. that, uh, Bob Echo's brother. And uh, Dad left sailor hats hanging in the hall, so he'd come up and grab that he'd run down the hill like that because he'd see that sailor hat in the hall. I didn't know about that. <laughs> Did you don't like Dad, though, that way? Oh, yeah, because Dad was, he was good to the family. He was real good. He so, was a real good, uh, uh, -uh. So where did, uh, where'd you guys go then on we dates went, and so oh, forth? Oh, to the show. We went to, what did we see? Harold Lloyd. 
I think that was the Harry first Harry Wise and what? Mama's Boy or something? Wasn't that it? The first show we the saw? One? Mama's Boy or something? Where did you go to show? Downtown? No, we yeah. walked, didn't we? Because you had to take walked the red the car show. in those days. We walked for a long ways. Yeah, there was a show near uh, near where you lived. Not too far. And so Dad kept coming and and he asked me to marry him and I said I didn't want to well, get married. Well, that was a long time afterwards. Well, you were still in uh, still in San Pedro. What year were you talking about? What's the, what month, year, so forth were you talking about? Well, um... Like, when did you get that, when did you get that Espo Pi? When was that? What was the date of that, do you know? It's pretty yeah, hard to say. It was in the spring, I know that. Yeah, well, he went... About, uh, it was about March. I believe it was in March sometime. See, he left. Uh, what year? 19... Uh, 19... 19... 22, 1922, would it be? We were married in 1923. We didn't go together yeah, so long It was March 22. Dad left. My engagement yep. ring came through the mail. Yeah, because I re I, had already it. Told I was on my second hit. I re you remember? Well, it was in line. Because we were getting ready for the races in the summer. Big races in the summer. And I know it was in March. Oh, I had several trips down to the, the beach. To, to the the beach. To, on the battleship. Oh, I know that. You had to run the battleship? Yeah, and with the cockroach ship, he, and I saw guys <laughs> running around with boxes. I was Buckets of water to take a bath. You couldn't. Uh, I had to. I had to get. I had to go down the shower. I had to go. So they the, stuck uh, a Betty and I another. Uh, I just come uh, back from pulling a uh, pulling a, a, a practice run with the crew, with the boat crew, and I come back in and then. Uh, we went ashore with the sailors. I went ashore with the sailors. Yeah, after I took my shower and whatnot. And where? What were you then? A first class ship sailor. First class ship sailor. Yes. Yeah, I'll re-enlist. I could always tell him when he came uh, ashore, though, because he was the tallest uh, one. You know, I could see uh, his head. I was a first-class ship that on my first cruise, on my first uh, four years. For your first four years, now you're into your, in 22, you're into your second enlistment? My what? Second enlistment. Second enlistment? Yeah. In 22? You're yeah. into the second enlistment then, a four-year, yeah. second four-year hitch you're into. Yeah, I'm going in my second four-year hitch. Thomas Tillman. Sure. You have to leave the microphone alone now, please. Someone's down below. No. Here, honey, what's this? this you see, I, I was paid off, and oh, although I enlisted in New York, York, I was paid off in San Pedro, see, oh, on my oh, first enlistment. So, uh, when I uh, when I re-enlisted, I re-enlisted in San Pedro, you see. So, uh, when I got my uh, discharge, uh, special discharge, I didn't I get no transportation money because I I was paid off in in San Pedro. See, I had uh, no transportation money coming to me. See, so where where'd you guys get married? Uh, Los Angeles. Uh, in um, that was Edendale. No, 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 no. That was when you lived up on York uh, York. That's Edendale, isn't it? No, no, that is not Edendale. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, you remember. Uh, uh, yes. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. That was, uh, it was something else there that uh, they called Anyway, it. out on York Boulevard there. York Boulevard. Well, no. it's all Los Angeles now, isn't it? All yeah, of it. York Boulevard? Clarita, our bridesmaid, still lives yeah. there. Over 50 years ago, we've been married how long? 52, 53 years? 53 years. Starting to lose track of time. <laughs> well, okay, so... And our, our bridesmaid is still living there. You got married in church, or...? No, in the home. In his home, the By minister's home. No, at our home, at Grums. Was it? But yeah, and it was a, a Presbyterian minister. Mm -hmm. So you're forgetting, too. We never talked this over. <laughs> we never think about it. Okay, well then, um, where do you live? I mean, what happens then? Did, did uh, that, that, you know, that had the... Uh, Oh, I, then we went on our honeymoon. Uh, we we right had away? an apartment. We went to apartment. Yeah, we went to. Uh, we, we, we rented. Went to we rented an apartment before on the Santee we Street. Yeah. Santee. Santee Street. Yeah. It was yes. Because yeah. it was. Santee close and Twelfth, right by St. Joseph's Church. There, you remember? It was close to the TV station. You could walk. See. Mm-hmm. 
to go to back to the ship. But uh, and he had every night you had every night liberty then, didn't you? I did from then on, yes. And then we. Uh, so the fleet was permanently there. Uh, more or less permanently there in San Pedro? For the time being, yes. It was what they call a, uh, just like a rest period. Mm. You see, the the ships were tied up there, getting ready for maneuvers, see what they were going to do. Yeah, but then it went into dry dock. Up to Bremerton. Yeah, yeah then uh, that's when I went on really the honeymoon. Oh, so you guys stayed, you, you live in an apartment there at uh, San Pedro Street in Columbia. Yeah. yeah. And so then, uh, how long after you married before the Bremerton took off for Bremerton? About a month, huh? We only had the apartment for one month. I think so, yeah. We told the people that we rented from, we were only going to have it for one month because you were going to so go. So I went up on the Ruth Alexander. Ruth Alexander, right. Come back on the Dorothy or something? Dorothy? Uh, you, you went up on a... Big uh, a ship, ship, yeah. Passenger ship. Yeah. Kind it was thing. a great big deal. Hmm. And Dad was on... <laughs> And then we lived in Bremerton while the ship was in dry dock. Did the Navy help provide your transportation? No, no, that's no, no, another no. thing, you know. No, now, in uh, place, today, you know, one. the wives can travel around. That's why Dad got out of the Navy, you know, because, you know, I couldn't yeah. go with him. So well, how, what happens when you cycle that? The Bremerton situation up there, the apartment, and what you remember so much. Can you tell, tell that again about the snub thing, about the chicken? Oh. oh, well. Go over that again, because I think that's really good. <laughs> so anyway, I was scared on being 18 years old. I'd never been away from I home. You're 18 and Dad's 22. Yeah, and I'd never been away from home before. And Dad being a great practical joker. Yeah, he still is. After 53 years, he's still, he's still there. He's running <laughs> around with a false the cow, nose. The cow thing in the yeah. Okay. Yeah, he still so. does those things. I get under the thunder under the table and have it advice. But uh, then he'd come home at night. Every night he came home, there was something different. One night he'd come home with this box of snuff, and he'd acting all crazy all over the place. And <laughs> I really, I cry. I wanted to go home. Uh, chickens, you said. And then you bought chickens out on the road, or on the, they open had these market. open market Farmer's deals, market, you know? open farmer's market. And uh, we got a chicken, and I know he made it, we were fixing it in the sink, and I, uh, and he made it move. I don't know whether you're chicken that's alive. You know how they yeah. make the chickens move, you know? Yeah, but they're little And I had, gosh, we didn't have chicken that much. That pull the ligaments in the leg, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, boy, I was ready to go back home fast. But the but guys, the fellas knew on the ship that, that, I got my, that I was married, you know, and going to the show every night. And they were pretty good. They time. always gave me something that, like in the commissary, Says, well, you're not eating here anyhow. You're not eating nothing like me. So they give me meat to take take over at home or whatever I needed, like flour, or butter, or something like that. So they told you you had to chop wood. Yeah, they yeah. so he, he got so you got an thing. axe, didn't you? We had an axe. Well, you got an axe. But to, to it, cut Dad wood. told me that I had to do it. Oh, you had to chop the wood. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Wood. <laughs> but it was an all-electric. Yeah. But I know why. Yeah. I must have loved him. You know, but <laughs> he was good. He was he was a good guy. Laughing at that. Well then, uh, but anyway, then we what we missed was the Dad went to Hawaii on a cruise, and you went back down to San Pedro. Then he came back into San Pedro, and then he went to the Panama Canal, and went to the Virgin Islands, and he fought Bob Grant. Bob Grant for the heavyweight Navy, championship. Of the Navy. That's right. And That's for the old Navy heavyweight championship. Okay, you were the Pacific champion. I was the Pacific champion. champion, yeah. I went through the, all the contenders here on the Pacific Coast, that yeah. I, you know, on the Pacific Fleet that I had to fight, see? The and different division the, champs, see? And you got limit in your eyes. So you know, had to eliminate, you had to eliminate these yeah. guys, you see? But you got the... Uh, what happened was you got liniment in your eyes and the trainer was well, yeah, rubbing this, him down. The fellow, my, the, my manager, the fellow who was handling me, uh, the, my, the manager who had me first got paid off. He was tra transferred off to another uh, uh, ship. So another guy took over and he didn't know much about boxing, you know, or my handling me. So he got some soap liniment to rub me with before, during, you know, just before the fight. Well, he spilled it. Somebody talked to him, and he spilled his soap liniment and got my eyes and burned my eyes, and I could hardly see. Yeah. But I could not call the fight off. I had to go through with it, you see. So I lost. So Grant cut you. 
over the eye. He cut my he cut my eye, and the, and the doctor stepped in and and uh, wouldn't allow me to continue because the eye, he was afraid it would injure that eye. And you told mom this is the last fight you fight. I told yeah. mom that win, lose, or draw that that was my last fight. But I'm expecting Don then. He was expecting Don. He was carrying Don. Okay, so then you come back to San Pedro and uh, put when in for. Yeah, when I came back to San Pedro, I had that beautiful eye there, you know, that cut eye. And uh, she was at the dock waiting for me. And I had some uh, souvenirs that I had bought in the uh, uh, South American countries. And she says to me, uh, I had an, aff an affidavit in to get out of the service. That is, she was working with uh, Gr with Grum, say, to get me out. Yeah, and they went before the attorney. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the attorney's name again? You represented your mother, too. Hunt? 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 No. Hunt. 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 Yeah, Hunt. So anyway, uh, she asked me when I met her at the, at the dock, she says, you think you're going to get out? I said, it doesn't look that way. She said, I guess I'm stuck for the rest of my time. So mm -hmm. I came ashore that night. You know, I went home with her. And I went back to the ship the next morning. And the first thing I gets in there, uh, they says to me, hey, what are you doing board ship? I says, what do you mean? He says, well, we, they got a what he called here for your discharge. Hmm. I says, it's all Greek to me, because I never thought I was going to get out, you know. You did before I, we got married. You took, promised me that I could. Uh, <laughs> says I would work. I would, I would try all yeah. of my power. But the, here's what would, happened. We wouldn't have got married. The, uh, uh, the officer, Lieutenant Kuntz, used to be the race board officer and when we had a, a big uh, a, a party you know after the races that we had won he says if there's ever anything i can do for your boy you boys while you're in the service he says i will never forget you hmm. so i told mom his father was admiral Kuntz. he was the admiral see oh. and this lieutenant kenneth Kuntz was the son of the admiral so uh, I, I got in touch with him, and I says to him, uh, I don't know. I says, uh, it doesn't look like that I'm going to stay in the Navy. He says, why? I says, he says, you're a good athlete. He says, I sure like to keep you board ship. Well, I says, I'm married, and I says, my wife's expecting. And uh, I says, if there's ever, any, ever anything you can do for me, I says, I wish you put a good word in for me. I says, to try to get me out, see? He says, does she need you? I says, absolutely. So uh, he, was grim, you know. yeah. he pulled strings, <laughs> and uh, so uh, I was surprised that when I went back yeah. to the ship, you know, after uh, going ashore, and I went going back to the ship the next morning, and they told me, they said, you better get uh, your papers ready and get your stuff all together, because uh, you're going to be discharged. So I had to go back to the executive officer, and they says, Are you, do you approve of this? I says, well, if my wife says so, I said, it must be so. So they says, all right, so here, give me a slip of paper. And I had to go before all these different guys to get a clearance that I didn't owe the United States government a penny. Hmm. But it was an honest thing because yeah, he so was needed on account yeah. of Grum. See, I was the, uh, they were using my wages to keep the family together, see. But after I so got After Dad came into the family, why? After I got out, the man in the family. several guys got out. Did the they? three the same day, Dick and Harry, Blossom's husband, and Dad, the same day got out. Yeah. But, but Blossom had, had uh, she was uh, pregnant too. That's right, uh, yeah. But I had a hard time uh, uh, getting the clearance on all my stuff, you know, because I had uh, so much stuff, athletic stuff and stuff like that. And I had to have a special sea bag made, not the small sea bag. I had to have a special one made for all the gear I had. And I still gave a lot of my gear away, my boxing shoes. But I think I have my trunks yet, the last pair of trunks I fought. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. I got them. I think Kenny has the boxing gloves, the last pair of boxing gloves I fought with. And the uh, aluminum cup is still uh, mm -hmm. still here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Quite a few of the stuff. But all the other, my mm -hmm. boxing shoes and uh, my training trunks and all that, I had given the away to some guys. Well, well, you didn't, you weren't going to a job, though, when you got out. No, that was, so that had, was rough, yeah. Yeah, so what happens then? 
Well, well uh, I, I still had money coming from the government, and I was yeah. still waiting on the last check. Then you got the job at Baston Water. See, I, I had an allotment made out to Mom for $65 a month. You see, at that time, I only drew $84, and that was big money. So if I had to stay in another couple of months, I would have got $105 because I was acting cheap, see. So uh, when I got out, of course, we were living on that. I was living on that little bit of money that we had, and mm -hmm. uh, I made a few dollars extra uh, boxing too, didn't I? Yeah, I made a few extra dollars. Yeah, but the laundry, you worked in the laundry too, it, and made extra money. You worked in the laundry and. Oh, I had the laundry. Yeah. I had the laundry. Yeah, yeah, I had yeah, charge of the, I had yeah. charge of the laundry because it was up to me to. Uh, clean out the things, you know, where all this money and stuff would fall out of the sailor's pockets mm -hmm. and go into a trap. But nobody could get that out but myself because I had a padlock on it, you see. So and I had to clean that out every so often. Uh, see. And I had a fellow named Pat Cronin who was uh, my striker. He was uh, striking for a rating. And I says, Pat, don't you think it's about time we clean out that uh, deductor down there? He says, why? Is it time? I says, yes. I says, uh, when did we clean it out last? He said, we cleaned it out two weeks ago. And I said, it might be full of money again. So he went down there and he cleaned it out and he come up there with half a dollar, quarters, mm -hmm. paper money. We dry it out <laughs> and get credit for it in the bank, you see. Yeah. Yeah. And I used That's to give great. him a percentage. And then when Dad got a job, they hired him for three days and kept him for 14 years. And then he got oh, hurt. So he get, so he got the job with Bastion then. Yeah. 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 What happened? How long did you have to wait to before he got the job there? Not uh, well. Uh, uh, not too long. It was long to us oh. because you know we needed the money. Bastions yeah. was down. Where was that located? Uh, Violet. Twenty-one Santa seventeen Fe? Violet Street. Yeah. Twenty-one seventeen Violet Street. But what happened there is I was trying to get uh, get work, and a lot of guys said, oh, you have no problem getting work, like Art says, yeah. the poker and them guys in plumbing outfits. But uh, nothing turned up, you see. Because uh, they had new plumbing. Uh, just fit so I, uh, I kept at it, and uh, I went to uh, a couple of employment places. Things were tough. Boy, oh, they were tough. Really was tough. So oh, I went up to before it was tough. Yeah. 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 So I went up to a place, and... Uh, <laughs> A fellow yeah, says to me, he yeah. says, you, you, you might take a chance in going upstairs and seeing that guy. You, you might uh, know where you could get some work. So I went up there to see him. He says, you know something about pipe work, don't you? I said, yes, I do. And he said, who did you work for? I said, well, I got out of the Navy. Well, they're kind of skeptical, you know, about that time about hiring somebody out of the Navy, see. So he says, you stick around a few minutes. So I stuck around a few minutes, and he says, uh, he put his finger up. He says, I got a job for you. But he says, you have to take another man with you. So as soon as somebody comes up here, well, he says, I'll send him with you. Hmm. So he gave me the, the notice, and uh, I went down to the bastions where they called me to go, and I said, here's a, what do you call it? I have here a notice that you people uh, want some help. He says, uh, yes, we do. He says, uh, do you know anything about unloading cars? I said, no, but I said, I'm willing to try anything. I said, I need a job. So he said, look, he says, those cars have got to be unloaded in three days. All those tanks got to come out of there. They got to be unloaded. Now, he said, between you and your helper here, is there any friend of yours? I said, no, I don't even know the guy. Well, he says, you get them tanks unloaded. And uh, he says, we'll see what we can do. So we got the tanks all unloaded. Got them all, all out, of, out of there. And they, they bought these tanks from Wheeling, West Virginia. And they were special boilers. They wasn't making them here then yet. Mm -hmm. So I got the car unloaded in a couple of days. Yeah. So uh, Frank Allen was the foreman then. He says, uh, the whole bastion come down, you know, and he says to Frank Allen, who's that big fella you got there working? He says, seems to be a pretty good worker. And he says, uh, I wonder if he knows anything about pipe work. So Frank says, yes, he says he does. So he Frank says to me, he says, uh, would you like to have a steady job? I said, would I? So he said, well, I'll give you a job. He said, pay you 50 cents an hour. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'll take it. Better than nothing. Oh, Dad would have washed dishes in those days. Yeah. So uh, they put me to work uh, on different little jobs, you know, here and there to see what I could do. And uh, So finally, I found...
So what are you talking about? Well, um, like when did you get that? When did you get that Espo pie? When was that? What was the date of that? Do you know? It's pretty hard to say. Know. Yeah, well, it was in the spring. I know that. Yeah. Well, he well, about uh, it was about March. I believe it was in March sometime. See, he left. Uh, what year? Nineteen. Nineteen. Twenty-two. Nineteen twenty-two. Would it be? We were married in nineteen twenty-three. We didn't go together yeah, for long. It was March twenty-two. Dad left. My engagement yeah. ring came through the mail. Yeah, because I re I, had it. Told I was on my second hit. I re Remember? So it was, it was in March. Because we were getting ready for the races in the summer, the big races in the summer, and I know it was in March. Oh, well, I had several trips down to uh, the beach to, to the the, to, on the battleship. Oh, I know that. You know that yeah, and with the cockroaches, he and I saw guys <laughs> running around with boxes. I was Buckets of water to take a bath. You couldn't. Uh, I had to. I had to get. I had to go down the shower. I had to go. To the, so they uh, stuck uh, Betty and I another. Uh, I just come uh, back from pulling the uh, pulling the uh, uh, practice run with the clothes, with the boat clothes, and I come back in and then. Uh, we went ashore with the sailors. I went ashore with the sailors. Yeah, after I took my shower and whatnot. And what what were you then? A first class ship sailor. First class ship sailor. Yeah. Yeah, I'll re-enlist. I could always tell him when he came uh, ashore, though, because he was the tallest uh, one. You know, I could see I was his head. First class ship that on my first cruise. On my first uh, four years. Well, your first four years, now you're into your, in 22, you're into your second enlistment. My what? Second enlistment. Second enlistment. Yeah. But in 22, you're into the second enlistment then, a four yeah. year, second four year hitch you're into. Yeah, I'm going on my second four year hitch. Thomas Kelman. You have to leave the microphone alone now, please. Someone, someone, someone. No. Here, honey, what's this? What's this? You see, I, I was paid off, and although I enlisted in New York, I was paid off in San Pedro, see, on my first enlistment. So, uh, when I uh, when I re-enlisted, I re-enlisted in San Pedro, you see. So, uh, when I got my uh, discharge, uh, special discharge, I didn't I get no transportation money because I I was paid off in in San Pedro. See, I had uh, no transportation money coming to me. See, so where where did you guys get married? Yeah. Los uh, Angeles. Uh, in um, that was Edendale. No, 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 no. That was when you lived up on York. Uh, York. That's Edendale, isn't it? No, no, that is not Edendale. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, you remember. Uh, uh, yes. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. That was uh, it was something else there that uh, they called. Anyway, it. out on York Boulevard. There. York Boulevard. Well, right it's all Los Angeles now, isn't it? All yeah, of that. York York Korea, our bridesmaid, still lives yeah. there. Over 50 years ago, we've been married. How long? 52, 53 years. 53 years. Starting to lose track of time. <laughs> well, okay. So and our, our bridesmaid is still living there. You got married in church or? No, in the home. In his home, the By minister's home. No, at our home, at Grums. Was it? But yeah, and it was a Presbyterian minister. Mm -hmm. See, you're forgetting too. We never talked this over. <laughs> we never think about it. Okay, well then, um, where do you live? I mean, what happens then? Did, did uh, that that had the. Uh, Oh, I, then we went on our honeymoon. Uh, we we right had away? an apartment. We went to apartment. Yeah, we went to. Uh, we, we, we rented. Went to we rented the, an apartment on the Santee we Street. Yeah. Santee. Santee Street. Yeah. Was, yes. Because yeah. it was. Santee and Twelfth, right by St. Joseph's Church. There, you remember? It was close to the TV station. He could walk. See. Mm -hmm. To go to back to the ship. But uh, and he had every night you had every night liberty then didn't you? I did from then on yes. And then we. Uh, so the fleet was permanently there, uh, more or less permanently there in San Pedro. For the time being, yes, it was what they call a uh, just like a rest period. Mm. You see the the ships were tied up there getting ready for maneuvers. See what they were going to do. Yeah, but then it went into dry dock. Up to Bremerton. Yeah, yeah, then I, that's when I went on really the honeymoon. Oh. So you guys stayed. You, you lived in an apartment there at. Uh, 
Can't be free. So, yeah. Yeah. And so then, uh, how long after you married before the Bremerton took off for Bremerton? About a month. Huh? We only had the apartment for one month. I think so. Yeah. We told the people that we rented from we were only going to have it for one month because you were going to. So go. I went up on the Ruth Alexander. Ruth Alexander, right. Come back on the Dorothy or some Dorothy. Uh, you you went up on a big uh, ship, ship, yeah. Fancy ship. Yeah, that it was thing. a great big deal. Huh. And Dad was on, <laughs> and then we lived in Bremerton while the ship was in dry dock. So did the Navy help provide your transportation? Or? No, that's no, no, another no. thing, you know. No, now, the, uh, place, today, you know, the wives can travel around. That's why Dad got out of the Navy, you know, because, you know, I couldn't right. go with him. So well, what, what happens if you cycle that, the Bremerton situation up there, the apartment? And what you remember so much? Can you tell it? Tell that again about the snub thing, about the chicken. Oh, oh well. Go over that again, because I think that's really important. <laughs> so anyway, I was scared, on being 18 years old. I'd never been away from home. You're 18, and Dad's 22. Yeah, and I'd never been away from home before. And Dad being a great practical joker. Yeah, he still is. After 53 years, he's still, he's still there. He's running around with a false the towel, nose. The towel thing in the yard. Okay. Yeah. He still well, so. does those things like under the thunder under the table and every day, right? But uh, then he'd come home at night. Every night he came home and was something different. One night he'd come home with this box of snuff, and he's acting all crazy all over the place. And <laughs> <laughs> I really, I cry. I want to go home. Well, the chickens, he said. And then you bought chickens out on the road, or on the they open had these market. open market, farmers deals, market, you know? open farmers market. And we got a chicken, and I know he made it. We were fixing it in the sink, and I. Uh, and he made it move. I don't know what a chicken that's alive. You know how they yeah, make the chickens move, you know? Yeah, but they're And I had, gosh, we didn't have chicken that much. That pull the ligaments in the leg, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, boy, I was ready to go back home fast. But the but guys, the fellas knew on the ship that, that, I got my, that I was married, you know, and going to the shore every night. And they were pretty good. Right. They always gave me something to like the uh, commissary. Says, well, you're not eating here anyhow. You're not eating at the lake, man. So they give me meat to take take over at home or whatever I needed, like flour or butter or something like that. So they told you you had to chop wood. Yeah, they yeah. so he, he got so you got an thing. axe, didn't you? We had an axe. Well, you got an axe, but it, to cut Dad wood. told me that I had to do it. Oh, you had to chop the wood. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wood. <laughs> there was an all electric chair. Yeah. But I don't know why yeah. I must have loved him. You know, but <laughs> he was good. He was he was a good guy. Laughing <laughs> well, oh. well, then, uh, but anyway, then we what we missed was the Dad went to Hawaii on a cruise, and you went back down to San Pedro. Then he came back into San Pedro, and then he went to the Panama Canal, and went to the Virgin Islands, and he fought Bob Grant. Bob Grant, for, for the, the heavyweight Navy, championship. For the Navy. That's and right. That's for the old Navy heavyweight championship. Okay, you were the Pacific champion. I was the Atlantic Pacific champion. champion, yeah. I went through the, all the contenders here on the Pacific Coast, that yeah. I, you know, on the Pacific Fleet that I had to fight, see? The and different division the, champs, see? And you got liniment in your eyes. So you know, had to eliminate, you had to eliminate these right. guys, you see? But you got the... Uh, what happened was you got liniment in your eyes and the trainer was yeah, rubbing this, him down. The fella, my, the, my manager, the fellow who was handling me, uh, my, the manager who had me first got paid off. He was tra transferred off to another uh, uh, ship. So another guy took over and he didn't know much about boxing, you know, or my handling me. So he got some soap liniment to rub me with before, during, you know, just before the fight. Well, he spilled it. Somebody talked to him, and he spilled his soap liniment and got my eyes and burned my eyes, and I could hardly see. Right. But I could not call the fight off. I had to go through with it. You see, so I lost. So Grant cut you over the eye. He cut my he cut my eye, and the, and the doctor stepped in and and uh, wouldn't allow me to continue because the eye, he was afraid it would injure that eye. And you told Mom this is the last fight you fight. I told Mom that win, lose, or draw that that was my last fight. But I'm so, expecting Don then. He was expecting Don, so he was carrying it on. Okay, so then you come back to San Pedro and uh, put when in for... Yeah, when I came back to San Pedro, I had that beautiful eye there, you know, yeah. that cut eye. And uh, she was at the dock waiting for me, and I had some uh, souvenirs that I had bought in the uh, uh, 
South American countries. And she says to me, uh, I had an, aff an affidavit and they get out of the service. That is, she was working with uh, Gr with Grum, say, to get me out. Yeah. Yeah. And they went before the attorney. Uh, what was the attorney's name again? You represented your mother, too. Hunt? 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 No. Hunt. 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 Yeah, Hunt. So anyway, uh, she asked me when I met her at the, at the dock, she says, you think you're going to get out? I said, it doesn't look that way. She said, I guess I'm stuck for the rest of my time. So I came ashore that night. You know, I went home with her. And I went back to the ship the next morning. And the first thing I get in there, uh, they says to me, hey, what are you doing aboard ship? I says, what do you mean? He says, well, we, they got a what do you call here for your discharge. Hmm. I says, it's all Greek to me. Of course, I never thought I was going to get out, you know. You did before I, we got married. You took, promised me that I could. I would say I would work. <laughs> I, would, I would try all yeah. of my power. But the, here's what would, happened. We wouldn't have got married. The, uh, uh, the officer, Lieutenant Kuntz, used to be the race boat officer, and when we had a, a big uh, a, a party, you know, after the races that we had won, he says, if there's ever anything I can do for your bo you boys while you're in the service, he says, I will never forget you. Hmm. So I told Mom, his father was Admiral Coons. He was the Admiral, see? Oh. And this Lieutenant Kenneth Coons was the son of the Admiral. So uh, I, I got in touch with him, and I says to him, uh, I don't know. I says, uh, it doesn't look like that I'm going to stay in the Navy. He says, why? I says, he says, you're a good athlete. He says, I sure like to keep you aboard ship. Well, I says, I'm married, and I says, my wife's expecting. And uh, I says, if there's ever, any, ever anything you can do for me, I says, I wish you'd put a good word in for me. I says, to try to get me out, see? He says, does she need you? I says, absolutely. So, uh, because it was grown, you know. Yeah. He pulled strings, <laughs> and uh, so uh, I was surprised when I went back to the ship, you know, after uh, going ashore, and I went going back to the ship the next morning, and they told me, they said, you better get uh, your papers ready and get your stuff all together because uh, you're going to be discharged. So I had to go back to the executive officer, and I says, "Are you? Do you approve of this?" I says, "Well, if my wife says so, I says it must be so." So they says, "All right." So here, give me a slip of paper, and I had to go before all these different guys to get a clearance that I didn't owe the United States government a penny. Hmm. You see? But it was an honest thing because yeah, he so was needed on account of Grum. See, I was the. Um, they were using my wages to keep the family together, see? But after I got... But after Dad came into the family, why... After I got out, the man in the family. several guys got out, didn't the they? Three the same day, Dick and Harry, Blossom's husband, and Dad, the same day got out. Yeah. But, but Blossom had... had uh, she was uh, pregnant, too. That's right, yeah. But I had a hard time uh, uh, getting the clearance on all my stuff, you know, because I had... Uh, so much stuff, athletic stuff and stuff like that. And I had to have a special sea bag made. Not the small sea bag. I had to have a special one made for all the gear I had. And I still gave a lot of my gear away. My boxing shoes. But I think I have my trunks yet, the last pair of trunks I bought. Yeah, I think hmm. I got them. I think Kenny has the boxing gloves, the last pair, last pair of boxing gloves I fought with. And the uh, aluminum cup is still, uh, hmm. still here somewhere. Quite a few to say. But all the other, my boxing shoes and uh, my training trunks and all that, I had given them away to some guys. Well, well you didn't, you weren't going to a job though when you got out. No, that was, so that was to, rough, yeah. yeah. So what happens then? Well, well I, I still had money coming from the government and I was yeah. still waiting on the last check. Then you got the job at Bass and Water. See, I, I had an allotment made out to mom for $65 a month. You see, at that time I only drew $84 and that was big money. So if I had to stay in another couple of months, I would have got $105 because I was acting cheap. See? So uh, when I got out, of course, we were living on, I was living on that little bit of money that we had, and uh, I made a few dollars extra boxing, too, didn't I? Yeah, I made a few extra dollars boxing. Yeah, the laundry, you worked in the laundry, too, and made extra money. 
who worked in the laundry. And I had the laundry. Yeah. I had the laundry. Yeah, I had charge of the. I had yeah. charge of the laundry because it was up to me to uh, clean out the things, you know, where all this money and stuff would fall out of the sailor's pocket and, and go into a trap. But nobody could get that out but myself because I had a padlock on it, you see. So we had and I had lock. to clean that out every so often. Uh, see. And I had a fellow named Pat Cronin who was uh, my striker. He was uh, striking for a rating. And I says, Pat, don't you think it's about time we clean out that uh, deductor down there? He says, why, is it time? I says, yes. I says, uh, when did we clean it out last? He said, we cleaned it out two weeks ago. And I says, it might be full of money again. So he went down there and he cleaned it out and he come up there with half a dollar, quarters, <laughs> paper money. We dry it out right? and get credit for it in the bank, you see. Yeah. Yeah. And I used That's to give good. him a percentage. And then when Dad That's got true. a job, they hired him for three days and kept him for 14 years, and then he got oh, hurt. So, did he get, so he got the job with Bastion then? Yeah. When yeah. Got, Here's what happened. How long did he have to wait to, before he got the job there? Not, uh, well, uh, uh, not too long. It was long to us oh. because, you know, we needed the money. Bastion's yeah. was down, where was that located? Uh, Violet, 2117 Violet Street. Yeah. 2117 Violet Street. But what happened there was I was trying to get uh, get work, and a lot of guys said, oh, you'll have no problem getting work, like Art says, yeah. the Pokemon and them guys in plumbing outfits. But uh, nothing turned up, you see. Because uh, Dad knew plumbing. We just so kept so I, uh, I kept at it, and uh, I went to uh, a couple of employment places. Things were tough. Boy, oh, they were tough. Really was tough. So I went up to it was tough. Yeah. 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 So I went up to a place, and... Uh, a fellow yeah, says to me, he yeah. says, you, you, you might take a chance in going upstairs and seeing that guy. You, you might uh, know where you could get some work. So I went up there to see him. He says, you know something about pipe work, don't you? I said, yes, I do. And he said, who did you work for? I said, well, I got out of the Navy. Well, they're kind of skeptical, you know, about that time about hiring somebody out of the Navy, see. So he says, you stick around a few minutes. So I stuck around a few minutes, and he says, uh, he put his finger up. He says, I got a job for you. But he says, you have to take another man with you. So as soon as somebody comes up here, why well, he says, I'll send him with you. Hmm. So he gave me the, the notice, and uh, I went down to the bastions where they called me to go, and I said, here's a, what do you call it, I have here a notice that you people uh, want some help. He says, uh, yes, we do. He says, uh, do you know anything about unloading cars? I said, no, but I said, I'm willing to try anything. I said, I need a job. So he said, look, he says, those cars have got to be unloaded in three days. All those tanks got to come out of there. They got to be unloaded. Now he said, between you and your helper here, is there any friend of yours? I said, no, I don't even know the guy. Well, he says, you get them tanks unloaded. And uh, he says, we'll see what we can do. So we got the tanks all unloaded. Got them all, all out, of, out of there. And they, they bought these tanks from Wheeling, West Virginia. See, they were special boilers. They wasn't making them here then yet. Mm -hmm. So I got the car unloaded in a couple of days. See. So uh, Frank Allen was the foreman then. He says, uh, old Bastion come down, you know, and he says to Frank Allen, who's that big fella you got there working? He says, seems to be a pretty good worker. And he says, uh, I wonder if he knows anything about pipe work. So Frank says, yes, he says he does. So he Frank says to me, he says, uh, would you like to have a steady job? I said, would I? So he said, well, I'll give you a job. He said, pay you 50 cents an hour. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'll take it. Better than nothing. Oh, Dad would have washed dishes in those days. Yeah. So uh, they put me to work uh, on different little jobs, you know, here and there to see what I could do. And uh, So finally... I find yeah, I, I remember, you know, the garage. It, oh, that was, a that big, that was beautiful a big, garage. Yeah, super garage. Yeah. Oh, work and all the, the cement work, uh, Uncle Art, you know, did Super, you know, did Art do the cement work? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, the school, <laughs> and, the, and the fish pond. <laughs> I was telling Ruby the about, frog. you know, you Daddy used to bring home the teacher. He brought home the whole class to show you. He's real proud of his fish in the fish pond and everything. But he, Grandma had a... Uh, couch on the front porch and he says no I don't like that I don't know why they have that there 
He says, Can I show you the backyard? <laughs> I don't know why you never well, told yeah. us you didn't like that on the front porch. It was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a spring, it was a cot. Yeah, and it didn't you boys used to meet yeah. them? Yeah. They graced in that front porch. Oh, uh, yeah, probably. and big pillars, uh, you know. I bought yeah, those they were pillars. special. They were solid, too. Those pillars were solid. We bought them at William yeah. E. for the Gazette. Yeah. 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 yeah, remember? It was a well, nice house when we left. This is Mommy's ready for bed. It's coming up. Tired, I think. Well, uh, what well, everybody else in, in the neighborhood there? It, it, it was a pretty mixed neighborhood. I mean, like you know who lived on the corner there? That Joe uh, on the television, that a sports guy. What's his name? Ball headed. The, the uh, Pines. The Pines yeah. lived on the corner. Yeah. Well, that he's the on television. Is and Blossom said that that he lived on the corner. One of the there. companion brothers. Yeah. Boys. Arnold yeah. the one that I played with. And, yeah. Grattons lived next yeah. door to us. Oh, yeah, the Grattons. Grattons. She died. I remember her dying. Yeah. I remember we'll ever find her. Yeah. And he was a carpenter, remember? The and Terry lived on the other side, wanted to put butt in movies. Before the silly ones came in. And I remember the Ainsworths. Uh, the guy Ainsworth. worked at the studio. Yeah. Come on. They moved out somewhere. In San Norwalk. Fernando Valley. No, Norwalk or somewhere. Were mm -hmm. Well, uh, but there also there was a lot of uh, on the next street. there were a lot of uh, Italian families. There was uh, Costello in back. There was uh, okay, not too much mix then though. Daddy. Not at first. No, so they started uh -uh, to come no. in. No, that came in later. That uh, those the people on the corner came in. Yeah, later. down there the cactus was a big yeah, century yeah. plant. So there was a couple of Mexican but, uh, families, and then the Cost Mrs. Costello in the back. Mrs. Brady lived in the back of it. Yeah, Mrs. Brady lived in it. And she was and and Joe. Lynch yeah. lived back there. And Lynch mm -hmm. used to live across the street. Lynch? Across the street, yeah. Well, oh, yes. So what was the name of those people? Alice uh, Adams lived in Adam. the next house. Yeah, Alice He's Adam. dead. Everybody's dead. Mm -hmm. Dad well, and I are still hanging on. <laughs> Well, was everybody out of work then? You know, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, as soon as the recession oh, hit, yeah. everybody was out of work. And we yeah. were rich. We I Builder back across the way. Yeah, yeah I was the calling cottage. people around to get free uh, vegetables down at a place. I even worked at uh, down there because Vi and Ed moved in on us. And we yeah, had, they uh, moved in on us. And Vi, and Vi was sick. But now Vi was living with And Ed was out of work. She married Ed. Right. Yeah. Really. Yeah, and uh, Ed was out of work, and and they uh, they were with us. Earl right. was out of work for a while. He of course, we don't talk them. about yeah. those things. Grum was living. Yeah, and Grum oh, was there. Yeah. Uh, Grum all the time. Most Blossom's of the time. living with you. Yeah, we took in Blossom. We took in Rillo with his pregnant uh, wife. Uh, sure, one time I remember everybody got to sleep in all our yeah. Places, really. All our life we've been helping well, somebody. Was house, uh, was always Open a lot house. Of people there. You know, Joan, uh, Dory's mother says, like at Grand Central Station, they were coming in the doors and the windows both. But uh, that's the way I wanted it. And I still, my home is still open to everybody, and I, I feel that way, you know? Well, Dad was working long hours and, and had to ride the so forth. Then he'd go home and start working on it. On what house? were you doing? What am I doing? Doing all this time. Helping, painting, and, and falling off with buckets of glue, and no. Dad would laugh. I that, broke my finger. That was something. We <laughs> took, we were, we were uh, the, the, after we got the, the back end built, you see, we were gonna, in the kitchen, we put this sanitus. Sanitus, I don't know whether you know what this stuff is or not, but sanitus is like a cloth. And uh, glue you had to glue it on. In other words, you had to put this glue sizing on first, and and oh, then yeah. and then go to work and glue this thing here, and then stick it up there and brush out like wallpaper. So right. mom was doing that on a ladder on a stool. Dad's watching me. He's holding the stool. Yeah. You wonder so what mom's been doing all our life. I remember. This mom story. slept. Yeah. Mom slept off the stool with this bucket of glue all over. Yeah. And Dad laughed. <laughs> He's still laughing. It's so funny it how it happened, funny, Mom. Honey. Huh? It wasn't funny. It was funny how it happened. It was not funny. <laughs> <laughs> I broke my finger. <laughs> but uh, when we first bought that place, there was nothing else but one room, a front room there, and a little bit of a kitchen with uh, fresh board and one bedroom, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and then we went to work and made the... Uh, we did all the yard. Come in, Mom. I want to eat. Come in. I got to leave now. <laughs> mm 
Then we went to work and had the water. I put run the water in the house, and uh, uh, we didn't have no sink or nothing then. Remember, no sink. No, I, I had kept a water the cookies. Heater. I kept the cookies under a, a table, and you know those boys would never touch the without asking. They never touched anything. I bet you got that. Still got that same little table that we had when we. Uh, Yes. The men, we, uh, we yes. give it to Don and Dory, and then yes. I give it back to them. You use it, too, and then the Ken had it, and Probably. we still have it. With the flap board. Yeah. 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 It's here someplace. I don't know where it is. Well, what, no, 33 of the earthquake hit. What do you remember about that? You were telling me today yeah. about it. What? Well, you were laying on the floor with uh, this here Charlie, and... Watching the, the three of you was Marvin there too? No, Marvin, Mar was no, Marvin Charlie, no, it was Charlie, Charlie Bud, and Don, and, and Don, were, and they were listening to Chandu, Chandu the magician. Yeah, and this is Chandu and, and Gong. And all of a sudden, I think went bong, and then whoa! Yeah. Well, I looked outside, and a telephone pole was just a chimney. In the street, and there comes Lynch down the street, a woman walking, you know, and the street was just going in waves. Hmm. Yeah, it was frightening. It. Yeah, you could oh, see yeah, it. I could see and then the noise, the, the buildings crashing over in watts. Yeah. Oh, I'm telling you, it was terrible. And then the fire started. Oh. It was really something. And then Long Beach was hit really terrible, too, you know. Aunt Edna's house went two feet off of the foundation. That was really a terrible thing. Manny Guam lived down in uh, Venice, didn't she, at Culver the time? City. Culver City. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. And that uh, when we went to see how grim was, they get up there on Western Avenue, and a great big tank that holds about 10 million gallons of water bust it. We thought, uh, we thought it was wave. a tidal wave. They turned its back, and nobody but, uh, slept in the, the house. You got in the, you got in the car and you drove yeah. somewhere, but why? I remember driving. Because we were worried about grim. All we could think of was go get grim. Yeah. See? Panicky, you know. And so nobody slept in the house again. Nobody house, right? went back in the house. They no, they slept. We slept on the front lawn for a week afterwards. For a week, really? Oh yeah, don't you? You don't. Remember? I remember it. I just remember just the. Vaguely, huh? I remember the chandu. Yeah. I remember the baseball, and I. Yeah. I remember driving the car, and, but I don't remember. And I, it, I don't know. What, I remember how old you were. I haven't even thought about it. But five. I, I was five you at his up. age. Dad had heard his. And Hood River. Why don't you tell? How did you and Dad meet? Oh, that that is a story. <laughs> we have to tell that now. Wow, it's an advertising thing. Yeah, right but uh, see, um, well, what year was I that? was dipping them by hand. Oh. Then they come in with the machine to dip them, and oh, then you grab them. Oh, you're hand them. dipping the ice cream yeah. into the chocolate. Yeah, like my just mm. like that. Grandma could do it real quick. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Pick up the ice cream bar, and it went around this way, and you had to keep up with the machine then. And we're at a wrap them. It would dip the Eskimo pie, see? So hmm. then we didn't dip anymore after that. But anyway, uh, Grandpa wrote to me. Of course, Grum didn't like sailors. And in those days, you know, yeah, God. Was rowdy. Yeah. But well, where that, were you stationed then? Yeah, you were at, at, on the Idaho? On the Idaho. So the yeah. fleet was there. Yeah. In Sa at San Pedro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. San Pedro Harbor. Yeah. yeah, we were training for a race. And uh, I was pulling in the cutter, the racing cutter. We were out for a spin, you know, a, a practice run, to see according to our time. In other words, we try to cut our time down and pulling the length of the breakwater, that three and a quarter miles, see? Yeah. So uh, some of the fellas uh, were not... Uh, quite ready, you know, for a hard pull. So when we come in, we come in from the race, uh, we were kind of tired, and some of us were kind of disgusted because the time wasn't there. You see, we were trying to uh, pull that course in uh, less than 19 minutes and 30 seconds. And we didn't, see, it took us uh, over 20 minutes to pull that course. So, uh, the, the the mess cook setting up the table. He says, uh, "Pete, ain't you going to eat?" I said, oh, "I don't feel much like eating." He says, "Well, we got ice cream, you know." Mm -hmm. So I says, uh, "What? Where did it come from?" He says, "Well, he says they got it over on the beach." He says they picked it up. He says from the Crescent Creamery. And uh, I said, "Well, I'll have a couple of bars anyhow." He says, "A couple of bars? He says, Why not have a, a 
a carton of it. Oh, really? Yeah, so <laughs> I said, okay, give it to me. If I said, we got extra, a big carton. <laughs> So uh, when I, I ate a, uh, I started eating the ice cream, and when I looked in there, I seen this note, you know. I said, what's this? So uh, Does this have the name and the phone yeah, number, address? Yeah, address. Yeah. Address. 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 And this ice yeah. cream box, you see. And uh, a couple of guys all started gathering around. I said, let's take a look at that, because uh, maybe the girl's lonesome or something, see. <laughs> so I, I said, well, I think I'll drop her a line. So I, I, I dropped her and wrote a letter, didn't I? I wrote a letter. Yeah, and you asked me to meet you. And uh, I wrote back and says that my mother didn't let me meet those mm -hmm. on the, at the, no, they, he come in the uh, P.E. Station, P. station. Pacific that's where all the sailors came in. At Sixth and where? At the P.E. Station. Uh, at Sixth and Main. Well, where were you living then? Uh, 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 um, uh, Eden, 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 Edendale, Edendale. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Where's that? Well, that's uh, Silver Lake. Silver Lake? Yeah, where well, uh, you went to that uh, a party was given when you were in Kenny the service. Yeah, yeah, that uh, yeah. had the story spot. Yeah, yeah, Jason. Yeah, they gave a party yeah. there. But uh, anyway, uh, then uh, Dad wrote again. And wouldn't you know the first time he came? I was coming home with a bouquet of roses from another fellow that was a florist gave me to for grub. <laughs> and that is why I thought he was poor because he didn't have garters to hold his socks up. <laughs> yeah. Did you come dressed in your center suit? Yeah. Well, you didn't wear garters in your jeans. Uh, well, he, uh, well, he had socks on, but he didn't have no garters. I guess, and I didn't think anything of it, but Annie Vi said that. We never did. Oh, yeah, never get rid of Annie We Vi. never rolled. We never had garters on no. in service. But I was going with uh, George, you know. He'd come up to, yeah, no, another George, oh. that, uh, Bob Echo's brother. And uh, Dad left sailor hats hanging in the hall, so he'd come up and grab that he'd run down the hill like that because he'd see that sailor hat in the hall. I didn't know about that. <laughs> Did you like Dad, though, that way? Oh, yeah, because Dad was, he was good to the family. He was real good. He so, was a real good, uh, uh, -uh. So where did, uh, where did you guys go then on we dates went, and so forth? Oh, to the show. We went to, what did we see? Harold Lloyd. I think that was the Harold first Harold Lloyd one. and what, Mama's Boy or something? Wasn't that it, the first show we the saw? What? Mama's boy or something. Where'd you go to the show? Downtown? No, we walked anyway. Because you had to take a red car in those there days. Was, we walked for a long ways. Yeah, there was a show near uh, near where you lived. Not too far. And so Dad kept coming and and he asked me to marry him and I said I didn't want to well, get married. Well, that was a long time afterwards. Well, you were still in, uh, still in San Pedro. What year are we talking about? What's the, what month, year? So what are you talking about? Well, um, like when did you get that? When did you get that Espo Pie? When was that? What was the date of that? Do you know? It's pretty yeah, hard to say. Uh, it was in the spring. I know that. Yeah. Well, he well, about uh, it was about March. I believe it was in March sometime. See, he left. Of uh, what year? Nineteen. Nineteen. Twenty-two. Nineteen twenty-two. Was it? Would it be? We were married in nineteen twenty-three. We didn't go together yeah, so long. It was March twenty-two. Dad left. My engagement yep. ring came through the mail. Yeah, because I read I, I was on my second hitch. I read and listen. Remember? So it was, it was in March. <laughs> Because we were getting ready for the races in the summer, the big races in the summer. And I know it was in March. Oh, well, I had several trips down to uh, the beach. To, to the beach. On the battleship. Oh, I know that. He's on the battleship? Yeah, and with the cockroaches, he, and I saw guys <laughs> running around with boxes. I was Buckets of water to take a bath. You it, couldn't. Uh, I had to. I had to get. I had to go with, uh, down the shower. I had to go. With, so they uh, stuck a uh, Betty and I another. Uh, I just come uh, back from pulling the uh, pulling the uh, uh, practice run with the coat, the boat coat, and I come back in and then. Uh, we went ashore with the sailors. I went ashore with the sailors. Yeah, after I took my shower and whatnot. And what what were you then? A first class ship sailor. First class ship sailor. Yes. Yeah, I'll re-enlist. I could always tell him when he came uh, ashore, though, because he was the tallest uh, one. You know, I could see I was his head. First class ship that on my first cruise, on my first uh, four years. For your first four years, now you were into your 
From 22, you're into your second enlistment. My what? Second enlistment. Second enlistment. Yeah. 22, you're into the second enlistment then, a four yeah. year, second four year hitch you're into. Yeah, I'm going on my second four year hitch. Thomas Kelman. Yes, sir. You have to leave the microphone alone now, please. I want that one on. No. Here, honey, what's this? What's this? You see, I, I was paid off, and oh, although I enlisted in New York, I was paid off in San Pedro, see, okay. on my first enlistment. So, uh, when I. Uh, when I re-enlisted, I re-enlisted in San Pedro, you see. So uh, when I got my uh, discharge, uh, special discharge, I did not get no transportation money because I, I was paid off in, in San Pedro, you see. I had uh, no transportation money coming to me, see. So where where'd you guys get married? See? Uh, Los Angeles. Uh, in, um, that was Edendale. No, 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 no. That was you, when you lived up on York, uh, York. That's Edendale, isn't it? No, no, that is not Edendale. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, you remember? Uh, uh, yes. Uh -uh. No, 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 that was, uh, it was something else there that uh, they called. Anyway, uh, out on York Boulevard there. York Boulevard. Well, know. it's all Los Angeles now, isn't it? All yeah, of that. York York Korea, our bridesmaid, still lives yeah. there. Over 50 years ago, we've been married how long? 52, 53 years? 53 years. Starting to lose track of time. <laughs> well, okay, so. And our, our bridesmaid is still living there. You got married in church or? No, in the home. In his home, the By minister's home. No, at our home, at Grums. Was it? But yeah, and it was a Presbyterian minister. Mm -hmm. See, you're forgetting, too. We never talked this over. <laughs> we never think about it. Okay, well then, um, where are you going to live? I mean, what happens then? Did, did uh, that, that, that had the, uh, oh, I, then we went on our honeymoon. Uh, we we right went away? to an apartment. We went to apartment, yeah. We went to, uh, we, we, we rented, went to we rented an apartment on the we Santee Street. Yeah. Santee. Santee Street? Yeah, it was yes. because yeah. it was Santee and 12th, right by St. Joseph's Church there, you remember? It was close to the TV station. He could walk, see, mm -hmm. to go to back to the ship. But, uh, and he had every night, you had every night liberty then, didn't you? I did from then on, yes. And then we... Uh, so the fleet was permanently there, uh, more or less permanently there in San Pedro? For the time being, yes. It was what they call a, uh, just like a rest period. Mm. You see, the the ships were tied up there, getting ready for maneuvers, see what they were going to do. Yeah, but then it went into dry dock. Up to Bremerton. And, yeah, yeah then uh, that's when I went on really the honeymoon. Oh, so you, you guys stayed, to you, you lived in an apartment there at uh, San Pedro Street and 12. Yeah. yeah. And so then, uh, how long after you married before the Bremerton took off for Bremerton? About a month, huh? We only had the apartment for one month. I think so, yeah. We told the people that we rented from we were only going to have it for one month because you were going to so go. So I went up on the Ruth Alexander. Ruth Alexander, right. Come back on the Dorothy or something? Dorothy? Uh, you, well, you went up on a... Big uh, a ship, ship, yeah. Passenger ship. Yeah. Right, it was thanks. a great big deal. Hmm. And Dad was on... <laughs> And then we lived in Bremerton while the ship was in dry dock. So did the Navy help provide your transportation? Or? No, that's no, no, another no. thing, you know. No, now, the, uh, a today, a you know, the wives can travel around. That's why Dad got out of the Navy, you know, because, you know, I couldn't yeah. go with him. So well, well, what happens if you cycle that? The Bremerton situation up there, the apartment, and what you remember so much. And you tell, it, tell that again about the snub thing, about the chicken. Oh. oh, well. Go over that again, because I think that's really good. <laughs> so anyway, I was scared, no, being 18 years old. I'd never been away from I home. You're 18 and Dad's 22. Yeah, and I'd never been away from home before. And Dad being a great practical joker. Yeah, he still is. After 53 years, he's still, he's still there. He's running around with a false the towel, nose. The towel thing in his hand. Okay. Yeah, he still well, so. does those things. I get under the thunder under the table and have an but uh, then he'd come home at night. Every night he came home and was something different. One night he'd come home with this box of snuff, and he'd acting all crazy all over the place. And 
I really, I cried. I wanted to go home. The chickens, you said. And then you bought chickens out on the road, uh, on the, they open had these market. open market Farmer's fields, market, you know? open farmer's market. And we got a chicken, and I know he made it, we were fixing it in the sink, and, and I, and he made it move. I don't know what a chicken that's alive. You know how they can yeah, make the chickens move, you know? Yeah, but they're And I had, chicken. gosh, we didn't have chicken that much. That pull the uh, ligaments in the leg, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, boy, I was ready to go back home fast. But the but guys, the fellas knew on the ship that, that I got my, that I was married, you know, and going home. They show every night. And they were pretty good. They time. always gave me something to like in the commissary. Says, well, you're not eating here anyhow. You're not eating at the lake, man. So they give me meat to take take over at home or whatever I needed, like flour, or butter, or something like that. So they told you you had to chop wood. Yeah, they yeah. so he, he got so you got an thing. axe, didn't you? We had an axe. Well, you got an axe, but to, to it, cut Dad wood. told me that I had to do it. Oh, you had to chop the wood. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> there was an all electric. Yeah. But I don't know why so. I must have loved him. You know, but <laughs> he was good. He was he was a good guy. <laughs> well, that was oh. well, then, uh, but anyway, then we what we missed was the Dad went to Hawaii on a cruise, and you went back on San Pedro. Then he came back into San Pedro, and then he went to the Panama Canal, and went to the Virgin Islands, and he fought Bob Grant. Bob Grant, for the heavyweight Navy. championship. Of the Navy. That's right. And That's for the old Navy heavyweight championship. Okay, you were the Pacific champion. I was the Atlantic Pacific champion. champion, yeah. I went through the, all the contenders here on the Pacific Coast, that yeah. I, you know, on the Pacific Fleet that I had to fight, see? The and different division the, champs, see? And you got limit in your eyes. So you, you know, had to eliminate, you had to eliminate these yeah. guys, you see? But you got the... Uh, what happened was you got liniment in your eyes and the trainer was yeah, rubbing him down. The fella, my, the, my manager, the fellow who was handling me, uh, my, the manager who had me first got paid off. He was tra transferred off to another uh, uh, ship. So another guy took over and he didn't know much about boxing, you know, or my handling me. So he got some soap liniment to rub me with before, during, you know, just before the fight. Well, he spilled it. Somebody talked to him, and he spilled his soap liniment and got my eyes and burned my eyes, and I could hardly see. Right. But I could not call the fight off. I had to go through with it. You see, so I lost. So Grant cut you over the eye. He cut my he cut my eye, and the, and the doctor stepped in and and uh, wouldn't allow me to continue because the eye, he was afraid it would injure that eye. And you told Mom this was the last fight you fight. I told Mom that win, lose, or draw that that was my last fight. But I'm so expecting Don then. He was expecting Don, so he was carrying it on. Okay, so then you come back to San Pedro and uh, put when in for... Yeah, when I came back to San Pedro, I had that beautiful eye there, you know, mm -hmm. that cut eye. And uh, she was at the dock waiting for me, and I had some uh, souvenirs that I had bought in the uh, uh, South American countries. And she says to me, uh, I had an, aff an affidavit in to get out of the service. Uh, that is, she was working with uh, Grant, with Grum, say, to get me out. Yeah, and they went the before way. the attorney. Uh, what was that attorney's name again? You represented your mother, too. Hunt? 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 No. Hunt. 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 Yeah, Hunt. So anyway, uh, she asked me when I met her at the, at the dock, she says, you think you're going to get out? I said, it doesn't look that way. She said, I guess I'm stuck for the rest of my time. So mm -hmm. I came ashore that night. You know, I went home with her. And I went back to the ship the next morning. And the first thing I get in there, uh, they says to me, hey, what are you doing aboard ship? I says, what do you mean? He says, well, we, they got a what he called here for your discharge. Mm -hmm. I said, it's all Greek to me. Because I never thought I was going to get out, you know. You did before I, we got married. You took, promised me that I could. I would say that I would work. <laughs> I, would, I would try all yeah. of my power. But the, here's what would, happened. We wouldn't have got married. The, uh, uh, the officer, Lieutenant Kuntz, used to be the race boat officer. And when we had a, a big uh, a, a party, you know, after the races that we had won, he says, if there's ever anything I can do for your bo you boys while you're in the service, he says, I will never forget you. Hmm. So I told Mom, his father was Admiral Kuntz. He was the admiral, see? Oh. And this 
Lieutenant Kenneth Coons was the son of the admiral. So uh, I, I got in touch with him, and I says to him, uh, I don't know. I says, uh, it doesn't look like that I'm going to stay in the Navy. He says, why? I says, he says, you're a good athlete. He says, I sure like to keep you aboard ship. Well, I says, I'm married, and I says, my wife's expecting, and uh, I says, if there's ever, any, ever anything you can do for me, I says, I wish you'd put a good word in for me, I says, to try to get me out, see. He says, does she need you? I says, absolutely. So, uh, because it was ground, you know. Yeah. He pulled strings, <laughs> and uh, so uh, I was surprised when I went back to the ship, you know, after... Uh, going ashore, and I went going back to ship the next morning, and they told me, they said, you better get uh, you know, your papers ready and get your stuff all together, because uh, you're going to be discharged. So I had to go back to the executive officer, and they said, Are you, do you approve of this? I said, well, if my wife says so, I said, it must be so. So they said, all right, so here, give me a slip of paper, and I had to go before all these different guys to get a clearance that I didn't owe the United States government a penny. Mm. But it was an honest thing because yeah, he was right. needed on account mm -hmm. of ground. See, I was the, uh, they were using my wages to keep the family together, see. But after I so got... After Dad came into the family, why... After I got out, the man in the family. several guys got out, didn't the they? Three the same day, Dick and Harry, Blossom's husband, and Dad, the same day got out. Yeah. But, but Blossom had, had uh, she was uh, pregnant, too. That's right, uh, yeah. But I had a hard time uh, uh, getting the clearance on all my stuff, you know, because I had uh, so much stuff, athletic stuff and stuff like that. And I had to have a special sea bag made, not the small sea bag. I had to have a special one made for all the gear I had. And I still gave a lot of my gear away, my boxing shoes. But I think I have my trunks yet, the last pair of trunks I bought. Yeah, I think hmm. I got them. I think Kenny has the boxing gloves, the last pair, last pair of boxing gloves I fought with. And the uh, aluminum cup is still uh, hmm. still here somewhere. Hmm. Quite a few of the stuff. But all the other, my hmm. boxing shoes and uh, my training trunks and all that, I had given the, away to some guys. Well, working. you didn't. You weren't going to a job though when you got out. No, that was so that was to, rough. Yeah. yeah. So what happens then? Well, well, uh, I, I still had money coming from the government, and I was yeah. still waiting on the last check. Then you got the job at Bass and Water. See, I, I had an allotment made out to Mom for $65 a month. You see, at that time, I only drew $84, and that was big money. So if I had have stayed in another couple of months, I would have got $105, because I was acting cheap, see. So uh, when I got out, of course, we were living on, I was living on that little bit of money that we had, and uh, I made a few dollars extra boxing, too, didn't I? Yeah, I made a few extra dollars boxing. Yeah, the laundry, you worked in the laundry, too, and made extra money. You worked in the laundry. And oh, I had the laundry. Yeah. I had the laundry. Yeah, I had, charge of, the, I had yeah. charge of the laundry because it was up to me to uh, clean out the things, you know, where all this money and stuff would fall out of the sailor's pocket. Mm -hmm and go into a trap. But nobody could get that out but myself because I had a padlock on it, you see. Uh, we had and I had to lock. clean that out every so often. Uh, see. Uh, see. And I had a fellow named Pat Cronin who was uh, my striker. He was uh, striking for a rating. And I says, Pat, don't you think it's about time we clean out that uh, deductor down there? He says, why, is it time? I says, yes. I says, uh, when did we clean it out last? He said, we cleaned it out two weeks ago. And I says, it might be full of money again. So. He went down there and he cleaned it out and he come up there with half a dollar, quarters, mm -hmm. paper money. We dry it out right? and get credit for it in the bank, you see. Yeah. Yeah. And I used That's to give great. him a percentage. And then when Dad got a job, they hired him for three days and kept him for 14 years. And then he got oh, hurt. So, did he get, so he got the job with Bastion then? Yeah. When yeah. yeah. Here's what happened. How long did you have to wait before he got the job there? Not, uh, well, uh, uh, not too long. It was long to us oh. because, you know, we needed the money. Bastions yeah. was down, where was that located? Uh, Violet, 2117 Violet Street. Yeah. 2117 Violet Street. But what happened there is I was trying to get uh, get work, and a lot of guys said, oh, you'll have no problem getting work, like Art says, yeah. the Pokemon and them guys and plumbing outfits. But uh, nothing turned up, you see. Because uh, they had new plumbing. Uh, so I... Uh, I kept at it, and uh, I went to uh, a 
couple of employment places. Things were tough. Boy, oh, they were really tough. Was tough. So I went up three, four. It was tough. Yeah. 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 So I went up to a place and uh, a fellow yeah, says to me, he yeah. says, you, you you might take a chance in going upstairs and seeing that guy. You, you might uh, know where you could get some work. So I went up there to see him. He says, you know something about pipe work, don't you? I said, yes, I do. And he said, who did you work for? I said, well, I got out of the Navy. Well, they're kind of skeptical, you know, about that time about hiring somebody out of the Navy, see. So he says, you stick around a few minutes. So I stuck around a few minutes, and he says, uh, he put his finger up. He says, I got a job for you. But he says, you have to take another man with you. So as soon as somebody comes up here, well, he says, I'll send him with you. Hmm. So he gave me the, the notice, and... Uh, I went down to the Bastions where they called me to go, and I said, here's a, what do you call it, I have here a notice that you people uh, want some help. He says, uh, yes, we do. He says, uh, do you know anything about unloading cars? I said, no, but I said, I'm willing to try anything. I said, I need a job. So he said, look, he says, those cars have got to be unloaded in three days. All those tanks got to come out of there. They got to be unloaded. Now, he says, between you and your helper here, is he any friend of yours? I said, no, I don't even know the guy. Well, he says, you get them tanks unloaded, and uh, he says, we'll see what we can do. So we got the tanks all unloaded, got them all, all out, of, out of there, and they, they bought these tanks from Wheeling, West Virginia. See, they were special boilers. They wasn't making them here then yet. So I got the car unloaded in a couple of days. See. So uh, Frank Allen was the foreman then. He says, uh, the whole bastion come down, you know, and he says to Frank Allen, who's that big fella you got there working? He says, seems to be a pretty good worker. And he says, uh, I wonder if he knows anything about pipe work. So Frank says, yes, he says he does. So he, Frank says to me, he says, uh, would you like to have a steady job? I says, would I? So he says, well, I'll give you a job. He says, pay you 50 cents an hour. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'll take it. Better than nothing. Oh, Dad would have washed dishes in those days. Yeah. So uh, they put me to work uh, on different little jobs, you know, here and there to see what I could do. And uh, So finally, I found out that they were making water heaters, and they had about 20 guys in there making water heaters. And they were lucky if they made five water heaters complete a day. I was watching them guys work, and they, they all had a, a, a lackadaisical way of assembling these water heaters. I see most of these were to complete, you com assemble a complete one. Is that that's it? right, the, the, what they call the guts or the body of it, you see. But where their problem was, there's right and left nipples, right and left fittings, you see. And they, they get them in there, they get them cross-threaded, especially uh -huh. the left-hand thread. They get them cross-threaded, so they get them up on a rack, and they leak. And they send them back, send them back to the assembler. So uh, Kite was a partner. Now, there was three guys' partners. At Bastion. At Bastion. Bastion was one, Kite was one, and a Scotchman was another one. So the Scotchman was watching me pretty close, and uh, they says, the kite says, why don't you give that fellow a chance and see what he can do about the water heater, see what if he can improve on it. Well, and they give me a chance at it, and I assembled three of them, no leaks, no problem. See, everybody had a stamp. You had to put your stamp on that, see, so they would know whose boilers they were, whose water heaters they were. So I had no problem. So I got the knack of things, and these guys was watching me, they said, how does that guy do it? Hmm. So what they were, some guys were doing, when I had my back turned or something, they'd steal my stamp, you see, and put it on their boilers, on their water heaters. Oh, yeah. See? To say that I had uh, built them, see? Yeah. So I had a certain way of stamping them. See, I said, that isn't my tank. I said, uh, that uh, might be my stamp, but I said, I think that stamp was stolen. <laughs> off my bench. <coughs> but anyhow, I proved it to them that they weren't my heaters. So uh, the first real chance I had, I made eight water heaters without a comeback. Hmm. And Bastion was astonished. He says, uh, how do you do it? 
I said, there's nothing to it. Is you're just using your head a little bit. I said, there's just a certain way of, uh, you can't force a left hand thread. That cannot be done. I said, you've got to start that first thread evenly in there. And you see, when you start the left hand thread, then the right hand thread goes in easy. So you see, they both, left hand and right hand, and you see you use a wrench for the middle, and you keep tightening them up, you see, and that left hand, it just keeps tightening. Keep both tightened at the same time. See? So, <laughs> naturally, when I did that, they laid some of the guys off. Uh, yeah, that was bad. Right? That was bad. But they gave me three cents an hour more, which meant an awful lot. Three cents. Wood, as naturally wood would catch fire quicker than than the steel would. So I says, well, okay. He says, well, uh, you, whatever you need, let us know, and you go ahead and they put in the sprinkler system. So I put in the sprinkler system for him, hmm. and they, they they cut their insurance rates right down, cut it down in half, which meant an awful lot, see, because they had a wooden construction uh, construction building. So anyhow, uh, I went back again assembling water heaters. So then they put me on some stuff that was tough, big ones, the big ones, where the big apartment houses and whatnot. And I saved them a lot of money. The guy they had on it was spending, was putting a lot of stuff on these big water heaters, and they wasn't functioning like they should. There was a lot of contraptions on there, and there's, it was a the, the outlay, the cost, was, is, it was too much, see? So I cut it down. I cut it down because I had a system of uh, knowing the different fittings and whatnot. And uh, so I started making the big water heaters. They start cutting down their help. They cut it down from, from 26 men, they cut it down to 15 men, then they cut it down to 10 men, then they cut it down to 8 men. And they finally cut it down where, the, I don't know whether they still have the big Lincoln or not, but that big Lincoln is my idea. And the, uh, the safety pilot and the snap action thermostat is my idea. That's all my idea. So I rose from a guy of making 50 cents an hour. I went up to where they paid me $45 a week. But they were his inventions. I've got notes where he was yeah. promised that Bastion they had. Promised, they they promised me uh, every out. quarter that they would, Bastion, as long as he lived, said he would give me a check every quarter. And he died. As a bonus. For Elder Yeah. Now, you might not believe this, but I assembled, put them together in an eight-hour shift, 60 water heaters a day in an eight-hour shift. And you know how he... Heaters, Sixty water heaters. water heaters a day. Yale. And you know how he had to get home? Hanging on the hanging outside on of two streetcars. Transfer downtown yeah. Seven and hang streets. with one hand on the streetcar. So crowded to get home. And he always had a smile. You never heard anything cross out of Dad. And I don't think Dad ever licked any of the boys, did he? I don't think that ever laid a but hand on I'll tell you one before. thing. They never, they had their back to the walls there a couple of times. They were about ready to go bankrupt. I pulled them out of it. That time when I started making that uh, 45 and up to 60 heaters a day, that's what pulled them out of it. See? Because they could cut the cost <clears throat> where they were charging. Sixty and seventy-five dollars for a number two or twenty-four gallon water heater. They could cut their price down to where they they sold them to the to the plumbers. The competition was so clean keen that they sold them for eighteen dollars a piece and still made money. Eighteen dollars. When did uh, Bastion gave you the Model T Ford? That's when uh, Bud was little yeah, and well, we uh, had the trips in it. Well, now uh, Bastion's was Violet was what off of Santa Fe. Yeah. Uh, off 7th, yeah. Near 7th Street? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, off 7th Street, and then uh, uh, Violet was the next street off of Santa Fe. 
It's right there by Lane and Bowler's pump company, across the street from Lane and Bowler's. I remember, I can see it in my mind. I can remember yeah. the dock out there, the big concrete dock. That's and, right. And they drove off the side there, yeah. and there was a thing across the street, a water and power or some kind of a thing like no, that. No, that was, yeah, that's that big pump going yeah, big on. Pump that was Lane and Bowler's. Yeah. Lane and Bowler's, yeah. Used to um, go down there. Pick them up. Pick up bad. Yeah. Well, but, but they had... They had fittings there. They had bought them from, I don't know, some Chicago firm. Uh, they were full of sand holes. And they were black fittings. They didn't know how to use them. And they didn't want to lose the money. In other words, Bashan bought them for a song, you may know, say, for practically nothing. Well, there was only one way that you could use those uh, fittings. And that was to use a solution of salmoniac a muriatic acid in a vat and throw these fittings in there and they were rushed shut. Hmm. Wouldn't leak. And I saved 30,000 of those right and left L's that were Fitting. full of sand holes. Hmm. 30,000. 30, yeah. Wow. He had a lot of money involved in, in that. Were they always, Bastion's always kind of on the brink of going under because they were fighting yeah. big companies like Night and Day and... Yeah, yeah. yeah they like were that. fighting those people. General Water Heater, see General Water Heater. And they were really a small independent trying, That's to, get, right. trying to break in. That's right. See, and then uh, Day and Night, Water Heater Company. And they were selling directly to the plumbers rather than selling to the big outlet. Uh, yeah, Crane, you see Crane had certain ones. Uh, they buy their water heaters from and then Mission. They used to be the Merritt Water Heater Company, and then Mission took over, and, and Mission were, the, were the, the guys there, was a welder and uh, a painter and an assembler. They uh, pooled their money together, and they started this Mission Water Heater Company. That's how they got started. Hmm. Uh, they were a big outfit. Both away. Yeah, big outfit back there in, in Los Angeles. I went to work after I got hurt, you know, that time. Uh, I didn't want to go back to Bastion, but I went, of course, Bastion was dead. But I went to work for the mission. They promised me a good job there to work on the electric, electric water heaters. Well, they got so that I didn't get no cooperation there and, and making the electric heaters. And the uh, thing was that the, uh, uh, the rock walls, the, the fun glass that was in this insulation was just too much for me. I just had come out of the hospital, see. So I just chucked the job and went back to back. <laughs> so what happened? But Dad can lift even now with the way he's all wired up and everything. He can lift because he knows how to lift. But he was showing these fellas how to lift this water heater. Two and guys. They, yeah, these. Yeah, and they let the water heater go and hit him in the stomach, and that's what. Well, I had a I, I had a, a metal pedestal. I, I had a vice mounted on that. Now this was a six-inch uh, vertical pipe. And it had a one-inch boilerplate circle, you see, boilerplate steel. And I had this vise mounted on that, see, because that way there I could put in heavy fittings like it take a lot of, uh, uh, at that time was uh, what we call, um, uh, what did he call them? I don't know. The, big, the spreaders, the spreaders, the metal spreaders. I had to break them loose, you see, and I had to put them in this big vise, and this big vise would hold them. The, the vise was just bigger than one I have out here. And the, the, the vise would hold it, would hold it, and I could use plenty of leverage on that, you see, to break the joints and try to save as much as possible instead of discarding the whole business. Well, that saved money for the company, too. So what happened there was I was making a floater, what they call a floater, something new, for the domestic gas and electric company in San Francisco, and they had to be in uh, at two o'clock. The order come through that they had to be on the boat in San Pedro by five o'clock. So I try to rush this thing through, and it weighed about 350 pounds. It was a pretty heavy one. So these, uh, when I got it all assembled and ready to pull off the horse. I couldn't dent it. I didn't want to put no dents in it or nothing. So I asked the, these guys to give me a hand to get it off my workbench. You see, I had a big horse there, you see, a cradle-like. So they got a hold of it. They thought it was going to be a light thing. So they got a hold of it, you know, and tried to pull it up quick, you know, and it drove me back. Mm -hmm. I was with the vice, 
and my back was toward the vise, and I grabbed it at the head. You see, they had it by the legs, and they drove me back. Right. See, and these nipples were about that long, and drove those fittings right into my stomach there and floored me. And, and that was uh, before four o'clock because uh, we quit at four o'clock, and it dropped me to the floor. And I got up. I just thought the wind was knocked out of me. See. So I blew the whistle at 4 o'clock, I went home, and I just didn't feel right. So when I got so home... You went all the way home. So you didn't... I went home. You worked, and then you went to work the next day? Because you worked the day after you were hurt. Did he really? <laughs> and so you must have got hurt earlier yes. in the day or else went back. Because we were going to night school, and I can remember you had coming down the stairs, Dad got this he terrible pain. School. Yeah, we used to take... Oh, yeah, I was going to Bret Hart well, night school. Yeah, yeah, we were going. And I was taking up there. Oh, what were you taking? I was uh -huh. taking up air conditioning and uh, plumbing. Hmm. Uh, on a, on a so you're going over there too? Yeah, Plumbing's we were, there. yeah. Bert Hart. I went to Bert Hart in high school. Oh, is that right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and then... Uh, then I was taking a course at the International Correspondence School too, at the same time. I still like some of the books here. <laughs> we tried, anyway. So when they took him away, he was turning black and he laid nights mm -hmm. for a I whole week. I didn't think I was ever going to make Before it. they operated. Well, what did you feel? Was it ruptured what? No, it wasn't ruptured yet. Oh. He had as big as a football it formed in his stomach, and then it infection. did rupture. He had peritonitis. And it was an infection, right? And yeah. Yeah. Infection. Peritonitis set in, and uh, it uh, disrupted the... Uh, yeah. huh? They operated with a temperature. They call him the miracle man. Appendix. The appendix is ruptured. Ruptured the appendix. Well, he didn't, well the, no, the appendix... Uh, uh, floated away in this rupture of peritonitis, so yeah. he didn't have mm -hmm. any appendix. But, uh, so anyway, but I didn't think I'd ever going to make it back home when, when I left home. Four big buttons on him, do you remember, on his stomach? Yeah, I think, yeah. Oh, big yeah. talc of buttons the size of a silver dollar. It was, uh, Look how many things he's had, and then he had two time. major uh, operations in three days. By but, uh, last big deal. They had a, uh, in them days, uh, there was no antibiotics at all. You remember? There was no antibiotics. Yeah. Maybe it was really a no. no. We way. just had a good doctor, and the same good doctor day. operated on him yeah. 20 years yeah. later. Dr. The same Finan, doctor. Uh, Dr. Finan, he was from Reuben. Well, uh, let me take you back when when you worked when you went to work at Baskin's now. Where were you living? Oh, uh, on 3rd Street. Okay. Oh, I can tell you the exact address. Can you hold everything? Well, that's right. I just, just want to get the rough on. Just, will you I can't. Uh, I've got it here written down. I'll ask. Did you move into an apartment or something? No, or? we got a little house. We had a little house. A little we bought this place. That's where we Don was born. On 103rd Street. On 103rd Street? No, not 103rd no. Street. That's the no. first home we owned on 103rd Street. Yeah, okay, well, where were you? Oh. You rented a little place somewhere. And um, Don was born. Where was it? <laughs> huh? It was between Main Street and Wall Street that we lived. No. Yes, on the 103rd Street. Honey, where, uh, where we first where went. Where we first went. Uh, and not where we before went. 103rd Street. Oh, Jane, well, Jane, Street. Was Jane Street. It was Jane known Street. as Jane Street over uh, in Behind uh, that big hospital. What they call that place over there? Uh, it was a big hospital. Huh? By Whittier, near Whittier Boulevard. There. You remember? No, why didn't you? Miles Avenue. Miles Avenue. Miles Avenue and Jane Street. Well, why, picture. why didn't you move by Bastion? Oh, that, that's all. Oh, that's terrible to live down there. You there know no houses. There was live no place in? to live by there. No, that's all no manufacturing and that kind of stuff. So you had anyway, to, it wasn't easy to find a place to rent. So you had to so, look around. Yeah. So this was this one in Miles Avenue was near what? I mean, what? I don't recognize those names. So what? It's near where? Like was it down? Southwest area or? Whittier. Uh, oh, near Whittier. No, Whittier. We were right off Whittier Boulevard. Whittier we were only Boulevard. a short way from Whittier Boulevard. Because you remember, I used to get off the car at Whittier Boulevard when I first Indiana. worked Indiana. Indiana Street. Oh, uh -huh. sort of East LA area then. Yeah, I right guess, now. yeah. Okay, well, what got you down to 103rd Street? What, how did that come about? I was willing to live in a tent. It's just so we could have a place of our own. Yeah. Uh, and, well, yeah. we did have a lot we were going to pay on, you know, in Sarah Madra. Well, we, that didn't give us a home, and they expected too much, you know. That was too nice. 
before we uh, we got our money back out of that. Yeah, we had a hard fight getting it yeah, back. Yeah, but we got it back, and then we uh, bought the place on 103rd Street. Well, what got you down to 103rd Street? What was there something special? That it, was that it was no, advertised. No, it was advertised, wasn't it? We went and looked at it. It was a lot of. It was advertised at that time. The uh, little house with no water or nothing. No water or nothing. Not even inside plumbing or anything. Not a thing. First thing I started working on was putting water in the house. Yeah. What was there? Uh, was the gas station on the corner then? I mean, no, that's right. It was the old gas station. A couple gas cars. station was on the corner, yeah. And uh, yeah. 103rd and Main, there was a gas station there. Yeah. there was How many other houses were there? There was a Crips house, was there? No. Yeah, I guess the, I guess the houses were, were there, weren't they? The yeah. houses were it there, wasn't yes. Much built yeah, because they were uh, built in. Uh, they used to call that Green Meadows. Was it track? You know? Was that was a, a it development? Must, or was yeah. it track? Green Meadows. But there yeah, were all it, different uh, little houses, yeah. though. It was a Green Meadows track. It was a uh, Stone was the guy was the agent there. Remember Stones lived across the way in that house yeah. and across the way? Mm -hmm. Well, he was a real estate agent at one time. But we bought it from this uh, Greek who had the restaurant on San Pedro Street. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. You remember? Yeah. And Mrs. Sales had bought the contract from him. That is a better memory than I but have. She, she bought the wonderful. contract from him, and we were making payments to her through the bank. Yeah. $35 a month. Remember? How much did it cost? And we, what did we pay? Twenty-five uh, hundred or two thousand five hundred something like that. We paid twenty-five hundred dollars for it. Was you know really it's a lot in a place to yeah. see the lot over our head is really the all lot was worth. only fifty by one hundred and ten. But it was home. Yeah. Well, it was home, and uh, we got it fixed up real beautiful, and we left. <laughs> Bought a new. Well, um, who was? Living there then when you first, what year would you move Glassby. in? Glassby. Gla They're all dead. Everybody's Glassby? dead. Yeah. Well, when you, what year was it Lynch. you moved in? Uh, it was, um, Don was still a baby, right? It wasn't too long afterwards. 1925? We, Farrington's owned the place that we rented, Farrington. And uh, Farrington, their name We were from, from Farrington. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, they were real nice to us, but. Uh, yeah. Uh, we weren't. We yeah. didn't live there too long after Don was born, though. We found this place, and mm -hmm. we might have lived there a year. Huh? <laughs> did you? Did you? And you, the first thing that we, that we I got, Mom, was a Victrola. <laughs> first thing I got I her was a Victrola. Bit, you know. Remember? Yeah. Then we bought a stove. Remember? Yeah. You then, got Victrola for anything else? Yeah, uh, well, no, a rocking chair. I a wanted rocking, to rock the rock, baby. A rocking chair. Rock. Yeah, that was the first thing. Five dollars for a rocking chair. Uh, that was a lot of money, boy. Well, hold on a second. Uh, stay with you for a little bit longer. I want to. No, don't get in there now. Okay, so, but the year you moved in, it was 1925. I imagine about. Okay. Huh? 1925 when we moved in our own place. Yeah. Okay, the Lynches, uh, Glassby, uh, Whit Whitlow's. I remember that. Yeah, Whitlow lived across, across the, street. the street. Johnson. Johnson lived there. Uh, and Mueller's lived the second house up there. Remember well, the Stifflers? Uh, uh, Stifflers, uh, yeah. Stifflers. Charlie Stiffler. Yeah. Trips. The Trips were in there before you were? Trips were there. Uh, no, they weren't there before us, were they? I don't know. They yes, outside. they were. Were they? Yes, they came there. To, they were living in a garage. Oh, yeah. Remember? Yeah. And the other relatives were living in a house. Oh, yeah. Remember? Yeah, so we started out there. I even helped when Marvin was w born. Was the street paved? Yeah. No, no. That well, it was a muddy, we muddy We had hole. to pay for that. Plenty, there was, hard. There was no out. Was the alley laid out in the back? And all that. that was never paved. The water yeah. went down through the alley, but uh, nothing else. Now it's paved, but I mean, at that time it wasn't paved. Yeah, no, they put in the a The water in came in through the alley, through, not the front. Through. You mean when it rained? Huh? The water. You mean the water when it rained? No, the, not with the water that rained. Just you had to trust the luck. That was. Uh, 
uh, mud in the back. I had to yeah. build a, bo uh, a boardwalk, you remember? Mm -hmm. On a board so we could walk. The outhouse was way in the back of the place. Oh, you had outhouses? I don't know. Up until when did you have an outhouse? Oh, I don't I remember when you dug that thing beside the this house. Yeah, cesspool, the cesspool, yeah. The first one they had, old narrow home. <laughs> but that, but oh. so you used the outhouse up until when? Gee. I, I, I can't remember that, but it was a, quite a while. Yeah, it was and quite we, a while. Well, nothing was important. We did things on our own because we wanted to be uh, modern. You know, we uh, had that urge yeah. to want to be. We, we, used the, we used the outhouse first for about uh, nine months, and then the city come in and said that we had to put vents in the outhouses. So you know, like they do in the camps from one thing to another, you know, so that the fumes and whatnot would would go up in the air oh. so, and not stay in the snow. City engineer. Came <laughs> and we, yeah, we saved our money. And we wanted Clyde to put in the cesspool, didn't we? Wasn't yeah. that it? Yeah, but and, he wouldn't do and it. And he didn't do it, and, we, and he thought he wouldn't get the money probably, but we had the money saved for it. You know, you I had to dig the hole myself and uh, put the cesspool in there. I remember that side of the house. Yeah, in the front of the house. Yeah. In the front of the house. Yeah, it's on the lawn. Then they. The front. That's where you had to have the first area. Yeah, some. Room. Yeah, it was went from the side of the house, from the bathroom. Yeah, one from the side. from the bathroom, from the side of the house that would be on the east side, and that. But you did dig one off the bathroom, I remember. There was one well, off the bathroom. Well, we did. Yeah, put another one in there. Yeah, when uh, Jules was there, they uh, you did a. Uh, you know how they have an extra deal or something? Yeah, that was do. not there. That was over in Arcadia. No, no, no. No, you had one in uh, in Fisher. I remember you having a big yeah. side of the house there. Well, Maybe I that's when he dig put the pipes in further. I remember further. digging right next to the bathroom. We put the plumbing. Yeah. Uh, the side. plumbing uh, was put in there. Uh, like it dug a rook, and then uh, I, I built a cribbage myself out of redwood. Mm. instead of making it a metal. But the reason why I had put it out in the front of the lawn because they were going to put that stroke pipe in there, then it wouldn't cost me that oh, much money yeah. to go from there to the to street. To the street. Uh, Dad yeah. was figuring, using his head, see. Yeah. But you had money, the, see, the big disc you're thinking of where we had to put the pipes yeah. in to go out to that part, I guess. Because you were quite small then. So what came what came next now? I you know uh, like when did you put in? Um, uh, yeah, I, I remember you know the garage. It, oh, that was a big, that was beautiful a big, garage. Yeah, super garage. Oh, yeah. Worked out and all the cement work to uh, Uncle Art, you know, didn't super, he? Super. Did Uncle Art do the cement work? Yeah, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and it's going in the in the fish pond. <laughs> I was telling Ruby about frog. you know you Daddy used to bring home. The teacher, he brought home the whole class to show you. He's real proud of his fish in the fish pond and everything. But he, Grandma had a, a couch on the front porch, and he says, "No, I don't like that. I don't know why they have that there." And he says, "Can I show you the backyard?" <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you never well, told yeah. us you didn't like that on the front porch. It was, it was a, swell. It was a, so it was a spray. It was a cot. Yeah, and so see, you so boys used to meet yeah. there. Yeah. They're greasing that front porch. Oh, uh, yeah. Family. And big pillars, uh, you know. I bought yeah, those pillars. Yeah, they were special. They were solid, too. Those pillars were solid. Yeah. We bought them at what do you mean? Yeah. 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 Remember? It was a well, nice house when we left. Just some Mommy's coming. raised the dead. It's coming up. <laughs> Tired, I well, uh, what Well, everybody else in, in the neighborhood there, it, it was a pretty mixed neighborhood. I mean, like you know who lived on the corner there? That Joe oh, on the television, that a sports guy. What's his name? Wall headed. The uh, Pinus. Joe. The Pinus yeah. lived on the corner. Yeah. Well, that he's the, on television, isn't it? Blossom said that that he lived on the corner. Were the companion there. brothers? Yeah. Boys. Arnold yeah. was the one that I played with. And yeah. Grattans lived next door to us. Oh yeah, the Grattans. Yeah, she died. I remember her dying. Yeah. Her over finder. Yeah. Uh, he was a carpenter, you remember? The and Terry lived on the other side, wanted to put butt in movies. Before the silly wings came in. And I remember the Ainsworths. Uh, the guy Ainsworth. worked at the studio. Yeah. Come on, they moved out somewhere. In San Fernando Valley. No, Norwalk or somewhere. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Well, uh, but there also there was a lot of... Uh, on the next street. There were a lot of uh, Italian families. There was uh, Costello in back. There was... Uh, okay. 
Not too much mixed friend, no. Not at first. No. Did they start uh -uh, to come no. in. Okay. That came in later. That uh, those people on the corner came in. Yeah, later. down to where the cactus was a big yeah, century yeah. plant. So there was a couple of Mexican but, uh, families, and then the Miss Costello's in the back. Mrs. Brady lived in the back of it. Yeah, Mrs. Brady lived in it. And she Kaysen and Joan. And Lynch yeah. lived back there. And Lynch mm -hmm. lived across the street. Lynch? Across the street, yeah. Well, oh, yes. And what was the name of those people? Alice uh, Adams lived in Adam. the next house. Yeah, Alice She's Adams. dead. Yeah. Everybody's dead. Mm -hmm. Dad well, and I are still hanging on. <laughs> Well, was everybody out of work then? You know, the yes, oh, yes. Yeah. As soon as the depression oh, hit, yeah. everybody was out of work. And we well, were rich. We, I Build her back across the way. Yeah, yeah I was it's calling hard. people around to get free uh, vegetables down at the place. I even worked at uh, down there because Vi and Ed moved in on us. And we yeah, had, they uh, moved in on and us. And Vi was sick. But now Vi was living with And Ed was out of work. She married Ed. Right. Yeah. Really. Yeah, and uh, Ed was out of work, and and they uh, they were with us. Earl time. was out of work for a while. Of course, we don't talk about yeah. those things. Grum was living. Yeah, and Grum was living. Uh, we had Grum all the time. Blossom was living with you. Yeah, we took in Blossom. We took in Rillo with the pregnant uh, wife. Sure, one time I remember everybody had to sleep in all the. Yeah, really all like, our life we've been helping well, somebody. Was that house, uh, was always Open a lot house. Of people there. You know, Joan, uh, Dory's mother says, like at Grand Central Station, they were coming in the doors and the windows both. But uh, that's the way I wanted it. I still, my home is still open to everybody, and I, I feel that way, you know? Well, Dad was working long hours and, and had to ride the so forth. Then he'd go home and start working. On what house? were you doing? What am I doing? Doing all this time. Helping, painting, and, and falling off with buckets of glue, and no. Dad would laugh. I that, broke my finger. That was something. We <laughs> put, we were, we were uh, the, the, after we got the, the back end built, you see, we were going in a kitchen, we put this sanitus, sand, I don't know whether you know what this stuff is or not, but sanitus is like a cloth. And uh, glue you had to glue it on. In other words, you had to put this glue sizing on first, and and oh, then yeah. and then go to work and glue this thing here, and then stick it up there and brush it out like wallpaper. So right. mom was doing that on a ladder on a stool. Dad's watching me. He's holding the stool. Yeah. You want to so, know what mom's been doing all our life? I remember. The mom stool. slept. <laughs> yeah. Mom slept off the stool with this bucket of glue all over. And Dad laughed. Oh, well, <laughs> he's still laughing. It's so funny it how it happened, funny, Mom. Honey. Huh? It wasn't funny. It was funny how it happened. It was not funny. <laughs> <laughs> I broke my finger. <laughs> but uh, when we first bought that place, there was nothing else but one room, a front room there, and a little bit of a kitchen with a uh, press board and one bedroom, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and then we went to work and made the... Uh, we did all the yard. Come in, Mom. I want to eat. Come in. I got to leave now. <laughs> then we went to work and had the water. I put run the water in the house, and uh, uh, we didn't have no sink or nothing then. Remember? No sink? No. I had I a water the heater. Cookies. I kept the cookies under a, a table, and you know those boys would never touch the... Without asking, you never touched anything. I bet you got that. Still got that same little table that we had when we. Uh, yes. The men we uh, yeah. we give it to Don and Dory, and, and then, then I give it back to. Did you use it too? And then the Ken had it. Probably. We still have it. With the flap board. Yeah. 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 Well, it's here someplace. I don't know where it is. Well, what? No, thirty-three the earthquake hit. What do you remember about that? You were telling me today yeah. about it. What? Well, you were laying on the floor with uh, this here Charlie, and. Watching uh, the three uh, of you was Marvin there too? No, Marvin, Marvin, no, Marvin? Charlie, no, it was Just Charlie, Bud, and Don, and, and Don, were, and they were listening to Chandu, the magician. Yeah, and this is Chandu and, and Gong. And all of a sudden, I think went bong, and then whoa! Yeah. Well, I looked outside, and a telephone pole was just a shimmyum. In the street, and there comes Lynch down the street, a woman walking, you know, and the street was just going in waves. Hmm. Yeah, it was frightening. It. Yeah, you could oh, see yeah, it. Could see and then the noise, the, the buildings crashing over in Watts. Yeah. Oh, I'm telling you, it was terrible. And then the fires started. Yeah. It was really something. And then Long Beach was hit really terrible, too, you know. Aunt Edna's house went two feet off of the foundation. 
That was really a terrible thing. Many Guam lived down in uh, Venice, didn't she? At Culver the time? City. Culver City. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. And that uh, when we went to see how Guam was, they get up there on Western Avenue, and a great big tank that holds about 10 million gallons of water washed it. We thought, and it, was we thought it was a tidal wave. They turned it back, and nobody so slept in the, the house. You got in the, the you got in the car and you drove yeah. somewhere, but why? I remember driving. Because we were worried about Guam. All we could think of was go get Guam. Right. See. Panicky, you know. And nobody slept in the house again. Nobody went back in the house. They no, they slept. We slept on the front lawn for a week afterwards. For a week, really? Oh yeah, don't you? You don't. I remember it. I just remember the. Vaguely, huh? I remember the yeah. condo. I remember the baseball, and I, mm -hmm. yeah. I remember driving the car. And, but I don't remember. And I, did, I don't know. What, I remember how old you were. I haven't even thought about it. But five. I, I was five. Was his age. Dad had heard his.